But we start with what has been described as an embarrassing FA Cup semi-final win for Manchester United. They were 3-0 up with 20 minutes to play when Coventry staged a remarkable comeback. United did win on penalties, but their performance left big question marks with Roy Keane calling them a championship team and Jamie Carragher predicting a change of manager in the summer. But Eric Ten Hag wasn't happy with the choice of words used by reporters after the game. I see the mistakes we make. We can't look away from it. But it's not an embarrassment. It's, as I say, it's a huge achievement. We can play on very high levels, but in the same match also we can go very in low levels um, in the same game. And that's not explainable. So there we go. Um, morning, Sue. Morning, morning. Stephen. Morning, Stephen, uh, an achievement or an embarrassment? Oh, a bit of both. Um, to reach a, an FA Cup final is a great achievement, but when you're 3-0 up in a game against the championship team, it should be, uh, should be very simple. You should be able to see the game out. And uh, I think it's been very evident to see this year that Manchester United are very vulnerable uh, or are a very vulnerable team and they make mistakes and they allow teams back into games and um, they, they got very, very lucky at the weekend. Mm. How much does this performance again raise question marks about Eric Ten Hag and his future? Uh, the Glazers were there, the, the new co-owner uh, was there as well, having run the marathon uh, yeah, as well. So yeah. that was a hell of an achie uh, <laughs> achievement. Would he have survived a defeat? And actually, was this perhaps just as bad as a defeat, the manner in which they collapsed? It's hard, isn't it? I, I have to agree with, with what Stephen said. I think, yes, it's great that they've obviously got to a, another FA Cup final, but to be 3-0 up and, and to let it slip like that, because it looked like it was just going to be a real comfortable win, the, the way that they were playing, you know, completely in control. They obviously got all of the, you know, the injuries that they had to sort of adapt and, and tweak things, players playing out of position um, with Casemiro at, at centre-half. But it was just the way that they collapsed. You know, at 3-1, you think, OK, consolation goal, then 3-2 and then 3-3. And then the fact that, you know, Coventry were absolutely brilliant. And I know we're, we're going to praise them and, and the character that, that they showed. But there is, there's a lot of things being done behind the scenes with Manchester United. They're getting the best people in. Um, in those positions. So they then be hoping that that filters down onto the field. But we have this discussion about Ten Hag and Manchester United and like, how do they want to play? What is what is their, their style of play? It's, you know, in the summer, it, it was, we want to be the best counter-attacking team in the world. Then quite recently he spoke about, he wants to dominate possession. You know, he, he wants to be the best team, doesn't he, on and off mm -hmm. the ball. So he keeps changing. And he would say, well, it's because I've, I've got injuries to players and that's the reason we can't get the style that we actually really want. But it's still difficult for me to see and for other people to see. When you look at the likes of, you know how Liverpool are going to play, you know how Manchester City are going to play, but how are Manchester United going to play? So I think, you know, we want to start seeing that, don't we? We want to start seeing the progression. And when you collapse like that, then that's not just the style of play, but it's also the, the character and, and the leadership within that team. So that's, that's the more worrying thing, I think. Well, let's pick up, up on that because he, Ten Hag did make the point before the game of only being able to field uh, his first choice team once due to all those injuries that he's had. In, as Sue was saying, Casemiro filling in there yeah. uh, at centre back yesterday, five central defenders uh, injured. Do you have any sympathy with that? Is that mitigating circumstances then? No. And, and the reason I, I was thinking about this last night, and if you think about the, the team that won the Champions League for Liverpool, and you could probably, you'd say, the best team would have been Alisson, Robertson, Van Dijk, Matip, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Fabinho Holden, Wijnaldum, Henderson, Firmino, Salah, Mane. That played together once. So what's your point? What, what, where, where are you going with it? That played once and that played in the Champions League final. But it managed to get to a Champions League final. It managed to go on and win the league the following season. You are never going to get your full strength team out. Week in, week out. Doesn't happen. Just does not happen in football. It's part and parcel of it. Injuries, suspensions. But what you've got to have is, you've got to have a clear identity as yeah. to what you're trying to put out on the pitch. Whether... And, 
People look at me and say, well, you've got your Liverpool hat on. It's not that. It's just because I watch more of Liverpool because I used to be there. So I, I'm, I work a lot because I live close to the ground as well. But I'll do a lot of Manchester City as well. No matter who you put into that team, the style's still the same. Could you say the same maybe for Gary O'Neill at Wolves? They, they've had a lot of injury. You know what Wolves are going to yeah, try and do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you, you understand what is the, the game plan. Look at Spurs. Spurs, the amount of injuries that Postacoglu had. Eddie Howe at Newcastle. I mean, it's just a terrible excuse. I mean, to come in and say, well, I haven't had me, me full strength team. Go and knock on every other manager's door and say, how have you dealt with it? What have you had to do? Well, we've, we've stuck to our principles. We've stuck to our beliefs. I, I remember when I, was, when I was at Blackburn and, and Sam Allardyce came in and he said, as soon as the, the, the manager starts to change his beliefs, it starts to spread throughout the squad and then the players stop believing in you as a manager. And, and I, it was something that stuck with me and I thought, you're right there because if you suddenly come in and go, oh, well, that's not working and that's, that's always the way I've played and I'm going to have to... There's being adaptable in a certain way, but you might be adaptable for two, three games, but not over the course of a season. OK, I, I hear what you're saying. It, immediately, my mind goes to Vincent Company, though, and people criticising him all the way through the season, saying, you've got to change here. Okay, you, you've gone up, but you're getting, you're getting beaten all the time. But and I understand is... that argument, but if you put Vincent Company, and, and I am not being disrespectful to, to Burnley at all, because they're all Premier League players and they deserve to be where they are. But if you give Vincent Company, I don't know, Tottenham squad, and, and say to them, go and play this style of football, They'll make less mistakes. They'll be more clinical in front of goal. They'll be in a better position. Just because of the quality of players that Burnley are able to afford to bring in under that model in the way that they play, they're going to be... They're going to make mistakes. They're going to concede goals. And they're, gonna, and they're not going to finish certain opportunities. Give, give Vincent and company better quality of players, then suddenly it changes everything. That's just the way things are. And you can have a style and you can tweak that style, can't you? Yeah. Depending, you can still see what a team's trying to do, but then you can go, well, if they're playing against a certain position, they may tweak certain things, whether it's personnel or whether it's a slight ad adaptation to you know, the, the way that, that they play. But yeah, with Manchester United, it's very difficult. And you're hearing him coming out saying, we're going to play this style, we're going to play that style. But then how are they playing? But, and that's, that's, I suppose, the, the tough thing, isn't yeah. it, to, the, to see? The, the thing is, is if... if and, and thankfully I'm not because he's under a lot of pressure. But if you're Eric Ten Hag, you're thinking I can't win here because I'm taking the brunt of all the negativity. It's the players out on the pitch and the players in training who aren't performing how I want them to perform. When I try and get tough, for example, Jaden Sancho, I'm pilloried, told I can't handle my players and I shouldn't treat players like that. So he can't win either way, can he? No, and I think the quite players... literally sometimes. No, <laughs> no. And I think the players have to take responsibility as well. Um, you know, there has been players that have underperformed this season, and, and I know that as a manager, you obviously set your team up a certain way, you pick the certain players, you you, you man manage them a certain way, of course. So so that is down to the manager. But then when you're on the field, like that collapse was nothing to do with, with Ten Hag. That's to do with the, the leadership and, and the character on there, trying to get a grip of the game. That's where you need your, you know, your sort of experienced players to step up and go, we're not going to let this happen. But then a manager can and a coach can look at things and go, well, how can we tweak things? Mark Robbins tweak things, change players, yeah. change tactics slightly, got themselves back into the game. So it, it's a two-way thing, isn't it? That, of course, the manager takes the brunt of it. Players have to take responsibility too.